And Councillor Ben Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I intend to be brief. Um, I don't have too much to add to what uh, previous councillors have said. Um, I'll, I'll join all the councillors who've spoken in uh, welcoming the successful bid. I, uh, I'm a regular visitor to Ballam myself. I travel to work from Ballam Overland Station most days and uh, uh, I share Councillor McDermott's view about the, uh, about the railway bridge and look forward to seeing that improve. Um, Tooting Town Centre also received funds through uh, round one of the uh, Outer London Fund, um, which uh, our Town Centre manager and uh, partners are doing some very exciting things with. Uh, in, in Tooting, we received a, a, a far more modest sum, and uh, the majority group sadly didn't see fit to uh, celebrate that by bringing it forward for debate at Council. But I'm, I'm very glad to have the chance to... Uh, Welcome it now, and I uh, hope you'll all be visiting soon to uh, perhaps go for a coffee in the brick box in Tooting Market in, uh, in Graveney Ward, or see some of the other interesting things that are going forward from that. Um, it's a very difficult time for local businesses, for town centres. Um, you know, schemes like this hopefully will make a, a real improvement, and you know, will help in the. Uh, in, in the short and medium term, both in creating work and uh, creating better environments. Um, it's only part of the problem, though, what, what part of the answer. What's, what's really hurting a lot of small businesses and town centres at the moment is, uh, is obviously the fact that a lot of people are struggling with family finances, a lot of people are feeling the squeeze. Um, things like the VIT ri VAT rise are not helping with that, but things like the uh, the current government's decision to cut too far and too fast are not helping local businesses and uh, local residents. So, you know, I think the town centre manager in Ballon and indeed all our town centres are going to need a lot of support over the coming years. And uh, particularly, uh, you know, it would be a great shame if, uh, if uh, we weren't to sort of build on this kind of success, both in Ballon and in Tooting and in all of the town centres. Councillor Hogg already made reference to the fact that this scheme doesn't come without its costs. Uh, I, I believe that it's costing over 200,000 of uh, Wandsworth funds as part of the match funding to the uh, OLF scheme. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly don't begrudge Ball on that. Uh, I, I do think that it's... Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of money to spend in one area, and certainly, as Councillor Hogg was saying, uh, what we must not do is rest on our laurels to rest on these successes. We must keep looking at the areas across the borough which, which need funding, town centres and residential areas. Um, you know, we need to spend over £200,000 of the economic development budget um, on these improvements, painting the ugly walls so that the customers of Waitrose won't... Uh, have their vision assaulted by its uh, hideousness anymore. When, when, when the new EDO takes his post soon, which I uh, look forward to welcoming him, I'll be very happy to uh, take him down to Tooting to show him some of our many uh, ugly walls. And, um, you know, as I say, I, I just hope that, uh, this is, uh, that schemes like this, which are very welcome, are uh, a signal of things to come across the borough and uh, not something we just uh, rest on and uh, remain satisfied with ourselves on. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Cousins. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to start off by echoing uh, and adding my congratulations to um, the Town Centre Manager and Town Centre Partnership and Businesses in Ballam. Uh, they have done a remarkable job in putting, putting together a, uh, an ambitious uh, and innovative and exciting plan for Ballam, which I think has uh, rightly... Uh, come through and won some money from the Outer London Fund. This isn't, of course, to say that we don't uh, and we shouldn't congratulate also the other town centres. Tooting, uh, of course, already benefited from uh, round one of the Outer London Fund. I know that one, of the, uh, one town centre was actually remarkably close uh, to winning in this round and it was unfortunate that they didn't quite just squeak it. Um, and two of the bids, uh, we are told, are actually being investigated for funding uh, from the GLA under other funding pots. Uh, so all is not lost on the, the other five bids that went through and didn't win. I think uh, uh, the congratulations from this council should be extended, not purely, I think perhaps mainly to Ballam, uh, but should be extended to all the town centres uh, because the work they put into these bids uh, showed their dedication and their determination at keeping our town centres vibrant 
uh, and moving forward. It's, it's been an interesting debate. I was curious to see uh, when I saw the, the order of speakers that we had uh, not only the Labour leader but the Labour group's dynamic duo speaking on this and I was looking forward to hearing what their comments uh, would be because it seemed to me this is unreservedly good news. Surely they have uh, got to join with us in uh, saying congratulations, welcoming the cash from Boris uh, and then sitting down and moving on. But uh, to Councillor Osborne's uh, credit, it took him at least 90 seconds, I think, to come to a negative, which possibly wasn't entirely relevant to the debate, but you know, it, it did take him 90 seconds, and he did recognise uh, that this is good news for Ballam. Uh, councillors Hogg and Johnson, I think, possibly have missed the point uh, a little bit. Um, Councillor Hogg, of course, said, well, we have Latchmere. Maybe we should be spending this cash in Latchmere, and possibly that's a point that we should take on board. Maybe as a council we should focus all our resources on whatever the most deprived area at any one moment happens to be. Bring that up, then move on to the new most deprived area until the whole borough is uniform. Maybe that's one way we could do it. Or what we could do, which is what every, every other walk of life, every business, every profession, uh, every skill, people do not neglect the things that are succeeding. They keep on top of them. They make sure that they remain ahead of the game. They make sure that they are still competitive. They make sure that the town centres that are good are not falling behind, are not losing out, and not getting to a stage where they're in crisis. And as we, some may have seen uh, over the past few days, uh, this has been a headline uh, repeated in, in newspapers and on the TV that high streets are in crisis. It is vital that Ballum isn't ignored because it isn't as bad as somewhere else. It's vital that Ballum, along with Putney, along with Wandsworth, along with Tooting, along with Clapham Junction, is maintained. It's given the tools that it needs to survive and to thrive. Um, and I would also point out here as well that just because this is one funding pot and Ballum is the one that's been lucky this time doesn't mean that any other town centre stands still. Every single town centre uh, in this borough has a business plan. That's, a, that's uh, revised every year. And every year we know that in a year's time and in three years' time our town centres are going to be better than they were. They address the weaknesses, they find the strengths, they make them better uh, and deal, deal with the things that need changing. And of course we do uh, live in a changing environment here. Uh, the Portis Review quite rightly picks up that people are in increasingly uh, looking at our town centres, looking at their high streets as leisure destinations. They don't go there to shop so much. They go there to meet friends. They go there to have a coffee. They may pop in and buy something. They may go to a specialist retailer, but often they're looking more towards the big out-of-town centres. They're looking at the Westfields. They're looking at the Saviour Centres. They're looking at Amazon. They're looking online. They're doing Google shopping uh, rather than walking down their high streets and popping in everywhere. And this is why the Ballon bid is so important because it is making Ballam an incredibly more attractive place. It's, it's putting in money that, frankly, we uh, may not have been able to put in ourselves to make it a pleasant environment, to make it a place that people want to be in, want to spend time in, and, as a result of that, want to spend their money in. Um, I'd like to thank all the speakers for their support for this. I'd like to thank particularly Rex Osborne, who's obviously uh, recognised a kindred spirit in Boris Johnson in his opposition, as he perceives it, to, um, uh, to George Osborne. Uh, and I, I hope that I'll be joining Councillor uh, Osborne on the campaign trail in coming weeks, uh, making sure that that, uh, that effort of Boris is rewarded and he's returned to City Hall. Uh, I'd like to finish by, uh, first of all, congratulating Ballam uh, on, on, on its ambition, on winning this money uh, and on seeing the way ahead. I think I'd like to uh, echo the, the comments that did come from the Labour Party, of, uh, congratulating and thanking the businesses, uh, because Ballam has not been a great recipient uh, of public funding over the previous years, and certainly not in the time that I've been involved uh, with economic development in the council, which is now, now six years. Um, the businesses are the ones who've been there throughout and have made Ballam what it is and have turned it around from uh, when Councillor Hogg first moved in uh, to the place that we all uh, know, enjoy and love now. And finally, of course, I've got to thank Boris. Uh, Boris has given us the money. Um, and whatever you think about the Outer London Fund, whatever you think about Boris, uh, we have to be grateful uh, that we're getting some cash from City Hall. And uh, I think it's... Uh, for many of us who've been around for a long time, that wasn't something we were getting for about eight years. For the past four years, we've got a little bit more, and long may it continue. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cousins. Power 11 was for information. I think it's all agreed. Agreed. Thank you. I now move on to finance and corporate resources, I see. Before I call on Councillor Govindia to move paragraph 18, could the Council note that the paragraph should state that the Overy and Scrutiny Committee agreed to support the recommended response to the Government by four votes to none, with two abstentions rather than by four votes to two? 
I now call on Councillor Govindy to move paragraph 18. Madam Mayor, in view of the lateness of the hour, I'll just uh, formally move uh, the paragraph. Councillor Thomas. <coughs> Madam Mayor, councillors, I, I welcome the opportunity to uh, actually have a look at this aspect of housing policy, which is one that we weren't able to touch upon in uh, the previous debate. And the reason for that is it actually uh, marks quite an interesting uh, U-turn in conservative uh, policy uh, in uh, Wandsworth. Uh, the uh, paper is all about uh, revitalizing uh, the right to buy, uh, but on the proviso that we won't lose housing stock because, so we're told, uh, there is going to be a one-for-one -one, uh, replacement. And this, in fact, does mark quite an interesting uh, contrast to the past. Because, of course, this council has, uh, you know, for many years, uh, made it a badge of honour to uh, sell off uh, social and uh, affordable housing. Uh, and uh, we've lost over half of our housing stock uh, in this way. And the Labour Party's uh, position, the position that uh, Councillor Belton... <laughs> Councillor Belton uh, and uh, other colleagues on the Labour benches uh, have consistently uh, argued... Uh, not against the right to buy, uh, but against uh, the loss, the selling off of council homes and uh, the failure to uh, replace them. Uh, so it's uh, very interesting that after so many uh, years, uh, the uh, Conservatives have actually come over to this way of thinking. Uh, I think, uh, sadly, this hasn't been a genuine conversion, but it's been uh, prompted by the embarrassment uh, suffered uh, from... Uh, suffered by uh, Grant Shapps, the, the housing minister. But we need to be in no doubt uh, that the situation we face, the housing problems in this borough, uh, are uh, in many ways the consequence uh, of, those, uh, uh, of the failure of those policies over so many uh, years. The reason we have so many people uh, uh, in bad housing, in overcrowded housing, uh, and such a long waiting list is uh, because of the number of homes uh, that were sold off. So if we've got a problem now, uh, it's uh, a failure that is of the uh, uh, Tory uh, parties uh, making in uh, Wandsworth. The other interesting thing about uh, the right to buy is the double standards uh, it actually uh, reveals. We're continually con told that uh, we can't uh, continue to uh, offer new tenants uh, social rented housing because uh, this represents such uh, a valuable subsidy uh, and it's absolutely unconscionable that it should be offered on unconditional terms. Uh, yeah, but when we think about it, this is exactly what uh, is being proposed uh, for uh, council tenants under uh, the right to buy. Uh, indeed, the amount uh, apparently isn't uh, enough uh, for this council. We want to uh, increase the size of the unconditional handout from 50k uh, to 75k. Uh, uh, and note this as well, you know, we're not talking uh, about a time-limited uh, subsidy here, uh, we're talking about a cash handout that will allow people to buy into home ownership uh, with all that that entails in terms of security of tenure. Of course, security of tenure is something that we on the uh, Labour side here uh, support, but I find it very interesting uh, that security of tenure is apparently uh, the right thing for people wanting to move into home ownership. But when it comes uh, to uh, council tenants, uh, uh, it's no longer actually the way to go. Now, uh, let's uh, touch briefly on this proposition of a one-to-one -one replacement. I'm sorry to say uh, that this is uh, something uh, of a dud. Uh, for a start, it won't actually be total one-to-one -to -one replacement because we're still not going to be replacing uh, the homes uh, up to the level of current right to buy uh, sales. Uh, and furthermore, the leader uh, uh, would in fact uh, like to push for us to be able to spend the capital receipts on other purposes as well, uh, apart from uh, new housing uh, provision. Uh, but more than that, it's not like uh, for like. The fact is, these new, for new homes, so-called one for one, uh, are going to be affordable housing light at much higher rents and without uh, the security of uh, tenure that is so important. Um, it's very clear that the solution to Wandsworth's housing policies is uh, more homes that are more affordable. 
I'm afraid uh, that uh, these proposals are pretty unlikely actually to deliver uh, more homes and they certainly are not going to be uh, more affordable. I always thought that actually conservative policy was about uh, investing uh, in provision uh, for the future and I've always believed uh, that that should include uh, our housing uh, future. I'm afraid uh, this uh, looks like another attempt at uh, thinly veiled asset stripping. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, in view of uh, the lateness of the hour, I, I wonder if we could expedite the remaining business of the evening under Standing Order 32. If it just helps your programming, can I just formally move paragraph 18 for uh, information? Please, those in favour of the motion. The 37 for 12 against, therefore the motion stands. Therefore we now move on to the next motion before the Council is receipt of paragraph 18 of the Executive Report in relation to the right to buy scheme. Is it, is it the same? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Just done that one. Now deal with the remaining. Right. Same numbers? Thank you. We will now deal with the remaining paragraphs of reports, continuing with Executive Report number 1. Adult Care and Health OSC, Councillor Madden. Mr. Mayor, Madam Mayor, uh, paragraph one for information. Environment, Culture and Community Safety OSC, Councillor Cook. Uh, Madam Mayor, um, paragraph two is for information. Education, Children's Services OSC, Councillor Mrs. Tracy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, beg your pardon. Um, paragraphs three to six are for information. Thank you. Housing SC, Councillor Ellis. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, paragraph 7 is for adoption. Green. 9 and 10. S same, 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 same numbers as before. Thank you. Paragraph 10. Read. Right. Thank you. Strategic Planning and Transportation SC, Councillor King. Uh, paragraph 12 is for information. Paragraph 14 is for information. And paragraph 15 is for information. Planning Applications yeah. Committee Report number 2, Councillor Cuff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Paragraphs 1 is for information. Paragraphs 2 is for information. Paragraph 3 is for information. Planning Applications Committee Report number 3, Councillor Cuff. Thank you. Paragraph 1 is for information. Paragraph 2 is for information. Paragraph 3 is for information. Audit Committee Report number four, Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Paragraph one is for information. General Post's Committee Report number six, Councillor Morritt. Uh, Madam Mayor, paragraph one is for information. Item 16 sets out proposed appointments to the memberships of the Education and Children's Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee, the Standards Committee and the Joint Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Are those proposed appointments agreed? Thank you, councillors. That concludes business for tonight's meeting. Good night.